I've got a million emails that I haven't read. Got a break pad squeaking that I gotta check, but I don't mind it. Cause I got her riding on that shotgun side. With that, take me to the sunrise. Look inside her eyes. Now we're flying. Yeah, we're flying. We got 10 miles of open road. That's in the rain. trunk I see in the rear view mirror looking back at me no I don't hide it cause she's dancing singing out to every song and she's always got all of the lyrics wrong but she don't mind it no she's still shining miles of open road last in the radio we got both windows down and no one around don't have to take it slow How do I start it? We made it! Hello everybody on YouTube again. We're back. This time just a little south of Austin. Not Austin as in the child. He's actually south of me now too. Uh, we're right outside of Lockhart. I forget the name of the town. Need, Neederville. Need, Neederville. Need, need to know how to pronounce it. I don't know. It's Niederwald. 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 I don't know. So we're, we're there at that place and we got a beautiful lakeside campground, but I want to show you something called Longhorn RV Resort. And kind of the interesting thing, I'm sitting here reading through this last night and one of the things it says on here is about the floodplain that's here and certain sites are in that floodplain. And then I went to check the weather and we're actually expecting a ton of rain. And it says you could be evacuated from your site if need be because of the, the rain, which it's starting to do right now. And I'm like, what the hell did we get ourselves into? Of course, now they're all out cutting the grass when I'm wanting to record something. So I got lawnmowers going all over, but, but it's a beautiful site, you know, concrete slab, got a picnic table, got full hookups. And we ended up here because of the fact that we couldn't get any state parks the state parks have been a nightmare to try to get here in texas i mean a nightmare even during the week it, it, there's places available but uh, it's very full and there's only a few sites during the weekend and weekends just it, forget about it we found one and we're, we're checking uh, another app to see what the cell phone reception looked like and it got taken so and then I think, I think we found another one the next day. But anyway, the kids are all out here because this is, a, this is called Longhorn RV Ranch and we've been gonna look around and see where these Longhorns are, but they're actually across the water. See if we can get those Longhorns on some video because I know there's one over there. The kids have their binoculars that we keep in the rig and they're looking at them. And I look through the binoculars and sure as heck, there is a Longhorn laying in the grass over there. So three of them, yeah. Why, yes sir, boy, howdy, those are some longhorns over there. 
Yep, that's confirmed. Uh, hopefully we can get a walk over there and go see them. There's a road that goes around the lake. I just don't know if I want to do that with the uh, rain coming. It's like Murphy's Law when you're vlogging. There's always got to be a lawnmower or a loud screaming child. They're literally mowing our site on the other side. So at the Longhorn Ranch, they got a boat landing, but this is what we keep seeing everywhere. We got these markers by our campsite. And I'm thinking, what in the hell? I guess this can flood that much. And we're we're within it. Like, it, it's, it's kind of crazy. We've never seen that in a campground. Like, welcome to the park, here's your site. And you might be asked to move at any time if the flood, if the waters go up. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that's probably not something that happens very often. But then we check the weather and they're expecting a couple inches of rain, like flash flood. And I'm thinking, this is, this is, <laughs> This is like the craziest thing to have to deal with. So I, I don't know. We're gonna ask at the front office if we should be concerned or not. But uh, Aiden found the basketball hoop over there. So he's really excited to get another slacking from mom and dad at the court, but he's getting better. They have a playground here. So I suppose the kids will play on that. And then there is a pool somewhere, but I don't know if you guys want to walk over there check out those longhorns no. all right who says yeah no. yes. 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 everybody says yes even aiden that is exactly what i was afraid of last week that paddle boat right there that was what ours was looking like when we climbed in it so you see it happens and i wonder where the people are that were on it what do you guys think do you think they're out there at the bottom somewhere yeah no. yeah i bet you they're still there They've been missing this whole time. Look at those horns. There's donkeys out there. Hi! Hello. <laughs> Be careful on the barbed wire. Those are Texas longhorns right there. Careful on the barbed wire. I'm not turned around, huh? Does that remind you of grandma's donkeys? Yeah, you can actually touch the fence and not, like, not, not get electrocuted. Yeah. Now, what if the, long, what if the long cones is just running back? I would move. I would move. They would probably break it and I wouldn't like that. I would run. I would definitely move. I used to be able to whenever she moved, I, whenever I moved, Six. What a cow. How many? Um, two. 
two sticks. And there's the RV park on the other side. You know, being from Wisconsin, I'm always such a big fan of cattle and, and dairy cows, things like that. And Texas Longhorns, being that we don't have them up there, always one of my favorites to come and see. We're gonna make the journey back and check out the rest of the park that we really haven't seen yet since it was just about dark when we got here last night. All right, I call this a human wrecking ball. <laughs> All right, who's gonna get wiped out? Here we go. <laughs> that was a pretty good shot. It might not be dad of the year, but it is one of the things that's fun about being a father, putting your children in harm's way. The wrecking ball. Pretty cool little camp store. So we asked the guy at the camp store, the two questions have been burning on my mind. Where's all the longhorns and where's all the oil wells? The longhorns, he said, they're hard to keep and might be why you don't see them as much anymore. Didn't really give any other reason, but the oil, he said, those started disappearing. He said not to be political, but during the Obama era, a lot of those started disappearing. And he said, another thing that's not political, part of it could be, is that the technology has gotten a lot better with the fracking and they go laterally underground now. So you don't have to see as many oil wells all over. And he never really thought of it, but he said, come to think of it, you're right. He's like, there's really not that many of them around anymore. He had to think about where he, knew where some was and he didn't really know. When I was a kid, they were every, both were everywhere. Well, it's Alex's birthday, so what are we gonna do? Well, gosh dang it, we're like any good Texan, we're going to Walmart. And get my present. <laughs> <laughs> Off to Walmart and then after that, cause we gotta refill the camper and try to get the truck washed cause it is horribly dirty. And then hopefully we can get some good barbecue in Lockhart if they have any left. Walmart complete and now we're trying to find a truck wash or a car wash that will fit into and then it's time to try out some of the world famous Lockhart barbecue. I, what place did you say this word? I'm probably gonna mispronounce it but it's crows. We're eating crow. <laughs> so it's supposed barbecue to crow. Supposed to be, they've been here since 1901, so we'll try that place. And brisket, sausage, and they have ribs, I think, too. They don't, they don't serve it with uh, forks, you get a knife. And it's famous here for what? Because of the way that they do it? The way do they do it, it's just salt and pepper. Um, that's how this barbecue is made. They don't do barbecue sauce, and so we'll give it a try. I just scoped out this one car wash. I got so much mud. Big Blue is not happy with me not wearing my seatbelt, but I was only planning on going a block down the road. So basically, we got mud all up and everywhere. Uh, yesterday was a real catastrophe because I took the truck and the camper into a truck wash and it looked like, I, I've actually been out mudding 
and gotten less mud, went through less mud. There was probably three inches thick mud on the ground in this uh, truck wash. It was, and it, it was, oh, I'm still mad about it. Uh, the people that own it were out there cleaning it after we went through, unfortunately. Um, it was so bad, but I ended up getting the truck so muddy, I was dirty. I don't know what happened. We went through some construction areas uh, where it was raining and like the truck and the trailer, I, I can't even explain it. I've never seen so much filth um, when we're coming across Texas. So try to get everything clean again so you can see out the windows and it's been hell to try to find a good place to, to wash. So I only was able to wash the camper. Now we're trying to get the truck through but it is a freaking chore to try to find a place to get it done. So that's what we're looking for. So the manual wash, which was literally called car wash, uh, quite a name, was clearly closed and closed as in, there's one, closed as in completely a dump. And so we just uh, <laughs> driving around trying to catch the next one here because the automatic one that we went to first we would have fit into, but it looked like, I mean, it's just not gonna, you know when the truck's not gonna get clean. They got these little sprayers and stuff. We've got like serious mud issues here. So um, this one that I found here is not even on Google. All right, the car wash was a mess. I got more soap and dirt on me than probably went on the ground. If you're wondering why I was working so hard to get to a car wash, what, I don't know what we drove through. One of the highways in Texas when it was raining on the way down, it was like we were going through this area that was like all these kind of like quarries or like almost looked like, I don't want to, it's probably not limestone. I don't think they, that's really what's here, but maybe a place where they make cement or whatever. And all these trucks have been hauling out all this stuff and the roads were just covered in it. And it literally tur turned the, uh, it was almost like somebody vandalized the truck and the trailer with white spray paint, just on everything. It was so bad. And uh, then we went into the truck wash. We got literally in three inches of mud, which flung mud all over the truck, the trailer. It, it was just insane. So it's been a frustrating little while with that, but uh, you could see where I missed a spot because I was in such a, such a hurry. I'll hit that with the, uh, hit that with the towel when we get back but i tried to get it as clean as we could i've definitely seen it look a lot better uh, anyway the barbecue place this place is supposed to be really really good she's in there right now and just gonna pick something up so we can take it back because we've got all of our groceries in here and this stuff's already been sitting so it's all part of rv life the beauty is is if you have your rig with you you can get your groceries bring them right out and put them away and so that's that's the nice part but truck's not perfect but it'll be good enough for today and we're going to be getting some brisket some sausage and whatever else she finds in there that looks good i'm so hungry and we're gonna be having a birthday party tonight home sweet home and time to put away those groceries Now it's that time to do the thing that modern diesel owners don't like doing. That fluid. That's right, we gotta fill her up. We've burned at least one of these all the way down here, so we're about half. Most of the time, these things do not rip off. The last two times I've been lucky. And if you're asking why I haven't deleted, I never will for several reasons. The biggest reason is I don't want to kill my resale value or my warranty. And that's pretty much it. Dealers can't really touch them once you delete them. And we do know that we're going to be going with the dually at some point. We're pretty sure about that. All right, usually that little vent is on the top. I got my uh, kid there doing the camera and he's cutting my head off. Well, you told me to focus on what you're doing. All right. Just don't dump it in your, don't dump it in your fuel tank. And uh, another little tip that I've got, stretch this all the way out and put this all the way down in and then stand clear of the box because I've had these things leak and it will turn your 
clothing white. We've had to get on these shoes. Yep, and it's dripping. Yep, see? All right, so I've done about six or seven of these in the past year, and I've never had one leak until last time, and now this one's doing it too. All right, we're just gonna feed it in. Yeah, it's not chipping. Like I said, I've never had trouble until the last one, and now this one did it. Good glue hasn't had a drink in a while. <laughs> but he's eating plenty. So yeah, I won't be deleting anytime soon. But if you're the kind of person who's hanging around the house, hanging around town, farmer, whatever, I can completely understand why you want to delete. So anyway, it's not that bad. You don't have to do it all that much. I'll probably go through about three, three boxes at least on this trip, all the way across the south and back up. So. All done. All right, what do we got here? A pod. What's it for? Alex. Oh. You give him your card? Yeah. And Alex, what did you say? Yeah. You said that was nice. Here we go. Who wants blue? Me, me, me. I'll have gray. Surprise! Surprise! Happy birthday! We're all dressed for the party! Happy birthday! <laughs> you get them hooked? Okay. The rule is you can't take off your glasses all day. No. All night. No. I, mean, I still have the glasses on. Well. We have to wear them. Now you all can see our battle. We've had this unit for two years and we've never filled it like this. This is, I don't, I didn't even know what happened. I know we brought a lot of stuff with cause we're gonna be working from the road, but oh my goodness. All right, so what do we go with with our dinner selection for tonight? Okay, we went with, to Krause Market and we got two pounds of brisket and then I got a pound of, it was a shoulder cut, which was more lean. This here costed $86. Mm. And I got three sausage. Their sausage is supposed to be all the rave. And there's there's hot and then there's other flavors too. This is the hot. And then we got coleslaw and mac and cheese to go with it. And they gave us a, an open bag of bread. <laughs> an open bag of bread? That's weird. And said, would you, he asked if I wanted bread. And I said, for $86, yes, I'm gonna take the bread. Are we supposed to feed the pigeons with that? So $86 worth of meat, but probably gonna say, why didn't you go there and eat uh, in the restaurant? We probably could have. She said there was obviously people in there, but we got six of us and uh, pandemic and whatnot. We wanted to have our own little birthday party back here. So we decided just to pick it up, bring it back. So we're gonna go ahead and put this $86 of meat down. There'll be leftovers for a couple days. So if you break it down, I don't hopefully, know. hopefully it's worth it. But there's our birthday party meal from Lockhart, Texas, which is world famous for barbecue. Oh, ho, ho, look at that. Can't wait to put it down. But yes, I'm washing it down with the very best. Sorry, I can't do Texan deer. We gotta have a spotted cow for this one. And I gotta say just one thing. We lived in the South and we know where the coleslaw is supposed to go. Not to say that we don't like to eat it on the side as well. But in the south, they look at you crazy if you start eating the coleslaw outright. You're supposed to put it on your barbecue. When you go up north and you put it on your barbecue, people look at you like you're crazy. So there's like a line right here. You got a line on the map right here. And this is basically coleslaw on the sandwich. And up here you got coleslaw on the side. We just do both. <clears throat> I am seriously stuffed. You guys get pretty full? My belly hurt. And we still gotta do cake. It is my yummy cake. It's the leftovers. Okay. Oh my god. So we ate till everybody is like beyond stuff. And so yeah, we could have done with like forty dollars worth. Yeah. Oh, all we have, all we have yummy cake. We're gonna have yummy cake. Yeah. We're gonna have yummy cake. Yeah. Who made the cake? Um, uh, mommy. Mom and you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Are you decorating your cake? Yeah. Ma, are you here? Sure. Wow. Happy birthday. To me. To me. <laughs> Not to me. <laughs> to you. Yeah. What if daddy takes your cake away and eats the whole thing? No. Mom. Yes. No. What I will. No, you're not. You little pipsqueak. Waiting on the official candle lighting. Yeah. Don't blow it out. Don't blow it out yet. Hold on. Wait. Happy we're gonna sing happy birthday now. Dad'll start. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> no. Blow it out. Oh my god, you got it! Nice, buddy. Is that good? Yeah. Did a good job? I just blowed it harder. Alex, what do you think? Is it time to eat this thing? Yeah. We're gonna carve it up like a dang old turkey on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Let's do it. There you go, Dad. All right, I want the gizzard. <laughs> My birthday. Did you find the wishbone yet? The wishbone. <laughs> So we're not new to celebrating birthdays. Oh, I gotta take these glasses off. Well, okay. Before before we lose too many subscribers here. We're not strangers to doing birthdays on the road. We actually, potentially, all six could have had birthdays on the road this coming year. Because we've talked about wintering down south. That's one of the reasons why we're down here, which would mean my birthday, Aiden's birthday, and Mama's birthday would all be down here December, January. However, somewhere down south. Um, Austin has had two birthdays on the road. Yeah, he did. He actually had his last two birthdays on the road. He was the first one in 2019. We went to a KOA in Wisconsin. And then last year we were in Alabama, right? We were in Alabama, so that was pretty cool. So he's his last two birthdays have been on the road. Um, Ashton was supposed to have a birthday on the road a couple, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, on uh, 13th, and we never got a chance because we were busy getting this thing ready to go so like so anyway when it comes to making uh, fun of birthdays on the road I don't know you just do it like you do at home you know in fact we probably do a little bit more because we actually put up some decorations I don't know what make else it fun. just make it fun I know I would love to have my birthday on the road It'd be awesome Alex just said this is his best birthday ever didn't ya yeah, yeah. is it your best birthday ever yeah. It, you know, and like we we feel bad sometimes because like you know like family are like, what are we gonna send the kids presents? You know we don't know like we don't know where we're gonna be and it, there's sacrifices everywhere you go, and we've always kind of just thought that you know being out and spending time together as a family is a huge gift. And although it's a little bit more for us than it is for kids, I know the kids when they get older are gonna appreciate it because I know that the trips we took with our family. Those were the things that we remember. I figured all the folks over at Gun and Gamers would appreciate this. There's a gentleman over here that has a Cummins with a snorkel kit on it. Check that out. You don't see that every day. He's got that truck set up pretty nice. I can't imagine why he'd need that, but I guess you could go through some water now. So we had a little issue last night. We were sitting around having a little birthday party and then the power went out and I couldn't believe we didn't really have much going. The air conditioner was on and the water heater, not enough to blow a fuse. And we had a problem with the same thing the night before. So I had my wife and my kid, cause I was in the shower when it happened, they came out and tripped the breaker and we didn't really think much of it. But what ended up happening was we've got a bad breaker. So I've got to notify the front desk and let them know. When you're traveling like us on a 30 amp, it's very important in my opinion to carry a 50 amp, a 30 to 50 as well as a 30 to 20 so that if you end up mooch docking or for whatever reason you need i've got actually two of these i've got a good uh dog or i guess they call this a i think they call this a dog bone right so i've got one of these good ones and then i also have just one of the plastic that go right from 20 to 30 it's about the size of just the top of this and uh, i carry those with me all the time so if you have a 50 amp setup you're going to want to have a 50 to 30 and probably even a 50 to 20 so that at least you can get your batteries charging so always carry those with you another little accessory that i have here is a 30 amp to 30 here this is just a tester test the wires i think if you get one of those really fancy surge protectors they're going to have the capabilities of this as well i noticed when i put this on the 30 we're going to trip the we're going to trip the breaker see how it flipped on and then off you almost got to kind of wiggle it around and we have a little see I have to hold pressure up on it 
This is why last night, instead of having to be without power, I just came out here and hooked up to the 50. Now, the downside of being on the 50 is I am not gonna be able to trip the breaker if I overload. And you will have on your fuse panel inside of your unit, you'll have a breaker as well. So you're relying on that to function properly because if that were to fail, then you're gonna probably have, if you overload, you would have a fire. So it's always best not to do it this way if you can help it. I, in two years of camping, we had one site that said they had 50 only. I was able to take it. We got there, they, had, they happened to have 30 anyways. So I've not used this in two years until last night. So always carry those gives you options and options are good yeah this thing won't even stay on anymore it's completely there it goes see i got it right there obviously not acceptable and that's just going to end up going out again so we'll flip that and we'll let them know just so i can fit it all up under the cover i just went ahead and hung it up like that and that way if we do get some heavy rain someday soon i'll go through all my recommended gear i know a lot of rvers do this and most of it's gonna be the same recommended gear because we're all going through the same experiences. But there are some things, very unique things that I've found in our experiences. And so we'll be doing that video this summer at some point. Well, the thing just happened. We just got a knock on the door a few minutes ago from the park owner who said he has a concern of the lake out here flooding tonight because he said that we're gonna get between three and five inches of rain and sometimes can happen up to once a month. Sometimes it won't happen for a year or two. And he said with us getting three inches of rain here just five days ago, that the ground is already saturated and doesn't have a lot of room to soak up more. So he was a little concerned and wanted to offer us a refund on our night tonight. Uh, he hated to do it. He just he just wanted to offer that, and he also said that he has a spot in a dirt lot with a plug-in, but that's it. So, um, and he said we we're welcome to stay, just kind of be ready and have things packed up and ready to move. And I told him that's probably the option we're going to go with because I checked the weather, and to be honest with you, yes, there's a huge storm system going through, but it's it. I looked at all the latest models, and we are just we're not in it, and and everything I'm finding it's totaling up to like maybe a quarter inch of rain, maybe a half an inch of rain total. They said there's a possibility of up to four inch hail uh, in this in this system that's coming through about 1030 tonight is when it would come through this area. And again, we're really not on, on that either. We're, we're on the edge or just outside of, of where they're talking the system to go through. So I, I, I'm one of those people who is, I don't play around with weather. In fact, it causes me a lot of stress and anxiety. And I usually am way ahead when it comes to this because it's all I think about. And I, I'm just looking at the, the models and everything I'm seeing. And I appreciate the park owner being concerned. And I, I kind of want to go with what he says because he owns the land. But everything that he's fearful of, I'm just not seeing that showing up on the models so i think we're going to think about it for a few hours tonight and we're going to look at to see if the models actually change at all if they end up saying that we're we're, we're going to be in it then i'll probably i guess what i'll end up probably doing at that point is just hooking everything up and he said we didn't have to but i'll probably treat it like we're boondocking at a walmart parking lot and we'll either stay plugged in with you know just power cords we have air conditioning and and or we might go up to the dirt lot up there but i hate to go up there and be sitting in the mud um versus being on the nice cement pad and he says when it does start to flood if we start getting that three to five inches of rain that the lake will start rising and he'll have about an hour and here's the thing where i'm thinking that it's gonna be okay to stay. He has a bunch of semi-permanent people that are staying here and they're actually, some of them are not even here. So he says he'll be out here all night regardless monitoring it because he has to move several people's trailers. It's, I don't think it's his responsibility per se. I don't really know what's going on with that, but, um, and he'll be out here hooking up to all kinds of people's trailers. I mean, they got everything set up. They got jacks down, they got hoses, they got lawn chairs and, and mats and rugs and everything. So I think he's got it a lot worse than I do. Uh, so I'll probably just go and, and have all my hoses picked up, my, 
my uh, jacks and everything will be all dealt with. So that all I've got to do is just drop the tongue on the ball, lock her down. Don't have to worry about weight distribution or anything like that. Just to drive up out of here on the higher ground um, up by the park office. And then we can uh, figure out from there what we're going to do. Obviously in this situation, I know that the park manager it is more than like willing to work with us in any situation so I, i'm not stressed out thinking he'll be mad if i'm sitting in the wrong spot he just wants to make sure everybody is up and out of here and so this is kind of one of those things as an rver that you'll run into that you'll end up in these weird crazy situations and some people might not want to portray this as the rv experience but it is so basically there is the reservoir that we're talking about that reservoir is man-made and it's designed to take some water from a nearby creek and hold it so that it doesn't send the water downstream and flood a bunch of i think it's farm areas he says we've got five feet here from the water up to these blocks so we've got five we'd have to have five feet of flooding and it takes it a, a little while to do that so i know people in the comments might think oh you're crazy you know staying but trust me i am not the person to sit around and screw around in this kind of circumstance i, I just i'm not seeing it looking at the weather it just doesn't seem like we're in the area so one other thing that makes this a whole lot of fun is that the owner told me that when it does flood, it causes a lot of critters to come out that are pushed from all the flooding. And he said it's very common that a lot of snakes come out. In fact, one of the other guys, one of his workers said that last time he was out here trying to help hook somebody's trailer up and get it out of the way in time, and he had a snake swim right between his legs. I kid you not. So, <laughs> just like, oh my God, I can't make this stuff up. So here I'll be trying to get myself hooked up, get rolling, and I'm gonna be looking out for snakes as well. I mean, I seriously don't think it could be that bad. I believe everything they're saying, but I'm just like, there's just no way. This just can't, this can't be real. So we're just gonna see what happens, but there's a lot of, lot of lake that has to come up there. So if we start getting a ton of rain, like it really gets going, before that water is even coming up, I'm gonna put on my rain gear and just pretty much get things, I'm just gonna get ready to go. And it's just one less thing to do tomorrow. And honestly, if it wasn't for stuff like this, it wouldn't be an adventure. I think I've said that before. So you gotta just kinda take it as it comes your way. And it makes for some great stories along the way. Cause I'm sure at some point we'll be sitting at a campfire somewhere I'll be telling everybody, yeah, we were in Texas this one time, but um, I can't say it enough. The owner and the people here, they've been more than cool about it. And I can tell they really, really, really err on the side of caution. Like none of them want to tell us that we got to move. They're just saying, hey, according to the weather, it's a possibility. So just, you know, be ready to go. So I'm going to run up and uh, pick the wife and kids up from the pool and hauling the laundry and then we should be uh, getting some dinner checking the weather and getting the last minute preparations in place so that uh, we can make a wise decision i see the neighbors over here he's unhooking his trailer up here on high ground by the office there's the swimming kids Ooh. From up here, you can get a lot better view of kind of the floodplain area, kind of where we're down at the bottom there. The Longhorns are way out there right now. They're coming up to uh, eat and they can actually walk all the way up by the gate here. Our neighbor guy here, he's out there, he's got a big trailer. And I went over and talked to him, found out why he has a snorkel on his truck. He has a damn good reason. And that reason, he lived in New Orleans. And that's all he had to say. I said, that is a really good reason to have that. He said, yeah, once you end up in water, he said, that thing has saved my ass more times than you could believe. So long story short, He's out there right now with that trailer, filling it full of all his stuff. He's been at this park for over a year. He's been in different sites. He says it's 
it's flooded three times. He said twice it happened expected and once it happened unexpected. So he's gonna stay the night, he's gonna chance it. He's at the lowest spot. Now look at some of the other amenities they've got here. Now you could make some good eating on that. Holy smokes. Yep, here comes Longhorns. So one of them, the name is uh, Big Red. That might be Big Red. There's also 7-Up, Sprite, and Mr. T. Hey! It's so cool to be up close to these animals. I could literally just sit here and watch this thing all day long. Can't get enough. I told Aiden, you would not want to back up right there and be trying to get yourself a selfie if he decided to get his horn through because that thing would not feel good up against your rear end. That is a sharp, sharp horn. Here comes all the others too. They can put their horns through the fence and you can get hit. Scratching his head. They got the dog park right here, and there's a dog over there, don't know what the hell to think. You know, I'm almost betting that that damage on the gate was caused by one of these. I mean, just look at the metal. Pretty sure. Oh man, these things are so fun to watch. I could just sit here all night. Only if I had a beer. So it's getting pretty dark out here, but out of an abundance of caution, I have decided to go ahead and hook up. One of the things I love about this Bulldog is that I can pretty much just lift the back of the truck up a little bit. I don't have the uh, weight distribution bars on there yet because I actually need this thing to be down a little bit lower to be level because we still want to be level at night for the fridge and the air conditioner. But with the Level Mate app, I can go ahead and see that we need to be down about an inch. Right there, we're dead level, so good to go. And now all I gotta do is get my jacks back down, and that way we're not wiggling around so much. But it's just for one night in the morning, it's less stuff to do. All right, we are dead level. It's flickering back and forth there because they're in there moving around. Uh, quarter, there we go, see? And uh, I've got minimal stuff to do if we have to get out of here. I just gotta raise that jack and then grab the old DeWalt here and put the other ones up and we will be ready to rock and roll. I still have my water and my sewer hose out. The electrical is still out as well, but I will be putting those in here momentarily as soon as everyone's through the shower. And that way, no matter what happens, I'm out of here within a couple minutes, at least a higher ground, and then we can go back to sleep. So I cannot stress enough how many times really weird stuff like this happens to us and many a times we're traveling there's very little relaxation time so i will smack the crap out of anybody in the comments section who thinks otherwise uh it's supposed to be relaxing and you know sometimes you can catch moments of it but it's usually just 
chaos like this of some th weird thing going on. So we'll see. Hopefully tomorrow we wake up and think, man, that was that was crazy. And uh, we can get some work done and then get on the road to the next place. But I am telling you, for the kids, I think are doing okay. But for myself and 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 her, we have got to get some relaxation. And we're gonna have to. We get to Florida. I just want to stay parked at a week somewhere because moving every three days is it's really stressful it's a lot of work and it starts to wear you down so storms moving in we're going to start monitoring the weather and uh, make sure that we're staying safe I'm also curious from other RVers how often you have these sorts of things happen I mean is this is this ever happened to you this is the first time flood related that we've been warned about evacuation we have already been in a park that has flooded and had water come up over our stairs and that like i said that was pretty panicky so i don't know this is seeming kind of crazy to have this happening so often but we'll see how things go well we survived the night there's the ominous lake there. It never actually flooded. Um, we ended up getting only about a half an inch of rain, which is what I was seeing on the crappy weather models, weather channel, AccuWeather. That's what I was seeing, but uh, the, the better models that some of the other people were looking at were showing more. And they did, to be fair, get hammered pretty hard just to the east, uh, sorry, west of us. Uh, it all went through and hit pretty hard. And I mean, it was all over the news. I mean, there was there was hail, there was a lot of heavy rain and all kinds of stuff. But as I was seeing yesterday, we were on the edge of it the entire time. Just a big scare for, for nothing, but it's better to be safe. Uh, don't get me wrong. So I really appreciate this park. The owner had a great chat with him crappy for us that we were in this situation and had to worry about it uh, we lost a little bit of sleep over it but everyone cleared out except one person over there and this gentleman over here uh, everyone stayed in place but everybody pretty much I think did hook their rig up to their trailer like we did and they were ready to go so otherwise everyone else did clear out yesterday so live and learn tell the story another day I guess right so all I've got to do today is get the jacks up and we're going to get on the road. It is already close to noon. It's actually, I think it's afternoon. And uh, we've been working all morning, so we're going to get on the road and get the heck out of here and head towards the coast where we'll be pretty much along the coast now all the way to Tampa, Florida. Oh yeah, and uh, checking the weather, it's not supposed to be raining right now. In fact, there's not even a green cloud showing up on there. This is what I mean. When you're RVing, you'll be frustrated with the weather more times than not. safety check here we've got our wiring we've got both of our safety chains on we've got the emergency brake line I've got the lock on here we've got our pins on tight we've got this pin on tight both sides are good to go I've just shut off the propane battery compartment is secure and I always do a double check on my switch here which obviously our battery is on you need to make sure the battery is on if you do have a trailer disconnect the only way your electronic brakes are going to work is if they have battery power. So if you put something like that on, make sure it's on. Otherwise, jack is up and everything's ready to go up here. I see me rolling. We're hanging in. Because I'm so white and dirty.
couldn't wait to move. I had so much to prove. It was all I could do to get away. But now that. 